surrender. They faced off, Xavier ready to shift as the smell became putrid with the strength of it. Serena fought the urge to vomit, bile rising up in her throat as she coughed and spluttered. Pairs of red eyes could be seen through the bushes, snouts and teeth pulled back in snarls. There were at least eight of them and Serena felt panic at the sight. Her healing magic would not be that useful in this kind of situation, instead pulling herself back as she shrank against the tree trunk. Xavier shifted before they could attack, clothes ripping to shreds as Shadow took over, Stefan forming a barrier between himself and Serena as she watched helplessly. Stefan couldn't do much either, but he could send them tripping over branches, or sinking, some of the earth beneath their feet. Sadly he was restricted unable to kill, as that would automatically make him a dark witch, something he was not about to become heaven to high water. Xavier grabbed the first one in front of him, his teeth cracking into the rogue's scrawny neck and snapping it easily, throwing the body away and darting out of the way of one attempting to sneak up from behind. He turned, flinging dirt into the rogue's face, before leaping and sinking his teeth into his back, biting deep until the spine cracked, ripping his teeth out and sending that one flying. It was chaos. Rogues flying and tripping as Stefan performed his little tricks, Xavier darting in and out, furiously protecting them both and taking down one after another without hesitation. She felt her body shaking, the very scene in front of her disturbing in all its gore, and the metallic scent of blood present in the air. The stench of death, so putrid and vile that Serena was forced to double over and vomit, luckily missing her shoes and clothes. The nausea, however, didn't subside and she grimaced, desperate to get away and sniff fresh air, as her stomach continued to rebel. It was down to Xavier and the last rogue standing, its eyes flickering to its dead comrades and over to the safety of the trees. It was clear it wanted to run, no longer wanting to fight a battle it was sure to lose. Serena felt pity for it. Xavier, she called out softly and his ears flickered, gaze never leaving the rogue who was shrinking back, let him go. They don't want to fight. Please no more bloodshed, she pleaded, her voice cracking slightly in her distress. The rogue's eyes flickered to her in a way that made her think they understood her words. Perhaps they weren't too far gone as a rogue. Serena didn't know if that was possible. Xavier eyed the rogue, but stepped back. Serena had begged for this one's life, and although he was loath to leave the rogue alive, his mate was struggling not only with what had just taken place, but clearly feeling sick as well. The rogue darted to the side and ran without a backwards glance, the sound of his paws pounding on the ground, fading in the distance, as he continued to put as much space between them and himself as he could. Xavier shifted back, Stefan releasing the magical barrier and wrinkling his nose at the vomit as he carefully stepped around it. He also studiously avoided looking at Xavier, who apparently wasn't bothered about his nakedness, embracing Serena who sobbed in his arms, grateful that he was alive, that him and Stefan were unharmed. Thank goodness her fear slowly fading as she let him hold her, although the nausea was fast becoming worse. We should move, Xavier said with concern, taking note of Serena's pale ashen face, and also smelling the vomit she'd brought up. Clearly she was ill and the stench in the air wouldn't help. Serena was only too glad to move away, sniffing the fresh air eagerly as they walked closer to the pack. Xavier arguing profusely that they needed to go back, Stefan readily agreeing. Serena was also in agreement, albeit unhappily, 
Seeing the wisdom of Stefan bringing warriors back through the portal and leaving her in the safety of the castle and its grounds, Xavier would not let her risk the safety of their unborn child and his repeated assurances that Annabelle would come back to her was all that she could cling to, knowing that he would do everything in his path to get the little girl back, one he would never ever deny again. He told her fiercely and she believed him. They never got the chance as a voice rang out ahead. Well, well that was quite a display, it said, Serena's heart sinking as she recognized who it was. Flynn stepped out looking completely satisfied with himself. Serena, he said mockingly, how lovely to see you again. Did you miss me? She wanted to spit at him claw his eyeballs out. Instead, she settled for flipping him off as he chuckled at her audacity. Well, I guess you know we're not mates, he said with a casual shrug as Xavier growled at him. I wouldn't shift right now, if I was you mate. Not if you want to see Annabelle alive at any rate, he threatened and Xavier stilled. Furious at this vampire and ready to rip him from limb to limb the second he got a chance. Are you really the vampire prince? Serena asked suddenly, wanting to know if he was an imposter. Flynn gave her a dashing smile, of course I am. But not the one in line to be king, not yet anyway. That is going to change very soon though, he said gleefully. Stefan had hidden behind a tree, Flynn oblivious, too caught up in mocking them and keeping a wary eye on Xavier, who was the biggest threat. Anyway, we're wasting time, Flynn commented. Shall we go see poor darling Annabelle? She's been crying out for you, Serena, wanting to know where Mummy is. They stepped forward hesitantly. Flynn moved, a blur, as he swept Serena up and held her in front of him, Xavier growling and turning as she screamed in fright. Have to be certain you don't try anything, he grinned, fangs flashing, one hand firmly held around her throat as she looked at Xavier, who was trying to stop Shadow taking over, telling him that to do so would get Serena killed. After you, Flynn said, whispering very softly into Serena's ear, try anything, anything at all and I'll sink my fangs into your neck and drain you dry. She shuddered, Xavier walking forward first, eyes sweeping the forest for danger as Flynn prodded Serena forward, hand never leaving her neck. The pack house slowly came into view. Guards patrolling stepping aside the moment they spotted Flynn, allowing them to walk onto the grounds without incident. It was a gorgeous house, almost a mansion in white marble, Greek-style columns decorating the front and two stories with massive windows and small balconies around the second floor windows that clearly belonged to bedrooms. Any other time Serena would have been in awe delighted at such a magnificent sight. A man stood there waiting, a small smile on his face. He exuded authority and strength, easily enough to tell he was the Alpha, as they halted several feet away from him. He was huge, even more than Flynn, muscles all over his arms and legs, broad shoulders and golden skin from being outdoors. His brown hair was neatly trimmed, but his blue eyes were cold, icy. He was far from what Serena had envisioned, was actually quite a handsome man, but his demeanor was cold dark. Welcome, he said in a deep gravelly voice, arms spreading out wide in invitation, as Flynn gently released his grip on Serena, who was now speechless. I'm Alpha Richards, and I've been expecting you. Dantha takes charge. Stefan had heard the entire conversation between Flynn and the others as he taunted and mocked them. Xavier was clearly at a disadvantage, unable to risk Serena and wanting to find Annabelle. He cautiously slunk behind a tree, 
Flynn, so busy being full of himself, that it was like he'd forgotten Stefan's presence. Heck, he should have at least been able to smell him. Maybe he thought Stefan wasn't too much of a threat. Who knows, who cared thought Stefan. He watched them go, Flynn's hand firmly around poor Serena's throat, as Xavier walked woodenly in the front, heart racing as he waited to see if he would be called out to, told to come out. He was in disbelief when they vanished from view creating a portal, instantly, and transporting himself back to the castle, startling Xantha and the other werewolves currently arguing amongst each other. Stefan, exclaimed Xantha in shock, what on earth are you doing back here? She looked past him, frowning as the portal closed and nobody else appeared. Where's Xavier and Serena? She said quietly as he just looked at her her face falling in dismay. I'm sorry, he whispered. We were attacked by rogues, and then that vampire Flynn basically threatened to kill Serena if they didn't go with him. Not your fault, Xantha said sadly. White witches, blue witches, neither are allowed to kill without becoming dark. You did what you could and at least we know where they are. She turned to the other werewolves who were clearly eavesdropping, curious about the other which who'd appeared out of nowhere. Are all of your men ready? She asked and they nodded firmly, mind linking them, all to come to the throne room, thundering footsteps sounding as a swarm of men came rushing in, standing behind their alphas or leader in preparation. Stefan, Xantha said, are you capable of creating another portal? Ah, shall I considering you've already done two and used quite a bit of magic? Stefan hesitated. Doing another portal would take most of his magic. It would be hours before he recovered and replenished his strength. He was also not doing a large amount of healing, meaning they could lose lives if he was too weak to heal them. Xantha saw his hesitation and realized his internal conflict. I'll do the portal, she told him firmly, her voice brooking no argument, and I will go and do the healing required. You can keep watch over your brother in case he needs you. It's probably best he sees someone he's familiar with if he does wake up. Stefan opened his mouth to protest. Xantha putting a finger to his lips and shushing him, shaking her head as he closed it firmly and stepped to one side. He knew better than to argue with Xantha. Once she'd made up her mind, there was no changing it. He knew that firsthand. Right, Xantha said decisively turning to the assembled werewolves and raising her voice to be heard above the chatter and muttering, I'm about to open a portal. It will not be exactly at the pack house but nearby, lest there are patrols waiting for us. Is that acceptable? She added with a glare, the wolves all glancing at each other and nodding, calling out their agreement as she huffed. These werewolves were quite intimidated by the little witch with her eyes blazing and her voice that fairly boomed across the room. All of them were afraid to anger her, much to Xantha's amusement. When the portal opens, you will need to be quick. You'll literally have to run into it or leap. I'll make it larger so that more can enter at once, but I won't be able to hold it forever, she instructed. So do not for the love of God hesitate, or I'll fling you through for wasting valuable time. They all flinched knowing it wasn't an idle threat, watching with wide eyes as she raised her arm and began to open the portal, all of them waiting until she yelled, go, and startled them into action. They raced into it, in droves jostling each other without injury as they moved as fast as possible with the large number they had. Her hand shaking, Xantha kept watch, waiting as the end of the procession finally moved through before turning to Stefan and mouthing goodbye as she too leapt through the portal, it closing firmly behind her.
The disorientation and speedy flying was something Xantha was accustomed to, easily remaining on her feet as she stepped out the other side. The others hadn't fared quite so well, most of them still lying prone on the floor when she arrived. The ones who had gotten to their feet had already shifted, noses in the air, as they tried to smell anything dangerous or other wolves nearby. Eventually all of them had shifted, Xantha remaining calm as they began to race off, one wolf sidling up to her and lying down as she realized it wanted her to climb atop of them. She did, almost squealing as it stood upright, hands clutching its soft fur tight as it turned its head and looked at her. Xantha apologized profusely, loosening her grip. Somewhat as the wolf began to run, the forest and multitude of trees passing in a blur as they followed the rest of the werewolves, who seemed to know exactly where they were going. Xantha leant forward her mind on what was about to occur and her thoughts focused on Serena, hoping fervently that she was all right, that her, Xavier, Annabelle and the baby were unharmed. I'm coming Serena, she thought fiercely, we're coming for you so hold on for as long as you can. I will never ever abandon you again, she swore. The image of a large mansion style pack house, seen in the distance, as she stared directly at it, willing the werewolf she sat in to run faster, desperate to get there in search for her sister. She wouldn't rest until they were found. Delusional. Alpha Richards looked amused, even as he sent Flynn a dirty look. You know better than to treat a guest like that. He scolded as though Flynn was a small child, rather than a vampire prince. Flynn just shrugged. Well, if it's all well and good, I'll be leaving now, he said. Remember our part of the deal. Not just the money, but the loyalty of your entire pack, Richard he said firmly, as the Alpha's eyebrow raised in amusement. Now Flynn, do you really think I'd forget that, Richard said moving closer to the vampire, who gave a nonchalant shrug. Serena wondered if Flynn was really this stupid, or if he was just damn naive. Clearly he didn't think Richard was a threat, because he stayed firmly planted where he was not even blinking as Richard halted mere steps in front of him. The money is in my study, Richard growled, in the top desk drawer. Flynn gave him a small smile and moved past him. What happened next was so fast it was frightening. Richard's hand shot out as the vampire gave a shout, tearing his head from his neck and throwing his body down to the ground, as Serena wretched in the grass next to her. As if I take orders from a disgusting vampire, Richard said repulsed, let alone give them order me and my pack around. He turned, seeing Xavier patting Serena on the back as she heaved, flinching slightly as the sounds of vomiting reached the air. He wrinkled his nose. Yuck, he said shuddering, if I'd realized it would make you sick. I would have done that out of sight. Serena didn't answer him, too busy spilling the meager contents of her stomach, to even cast him a backwards glance, Xavier helpless to do anything to help besides pat her on the back, sensing the werewolves surrounding them from all sides, as Richard waited calmly for Serena to stop, although moving a bit away, offended by the smell. Finally it ended. Xavier helping her to stand upright again, as she swayed slightly, her skin so pale it was almost translucent. Are you finished? Alpha Richards said impatiently, and Serena nodded numbly, Xavier narrowing his eyes at the man. At least Flynn was no longer a threat, though part of Xavier was slightly annoyed that he hadn't had a chance to get his hands on him. Anyway, I'm sure that you want to see Annabelle, he said with a wide grin, gesturing to two of his men, who turned on their heel and walked towards the house. What have you done to her? 
Serena snapped as he looked at her perplexed. Nothing, woman, he said, genuinely puzzled. I assure you she's been taken care of quite well. I'm not a monster, you know, he told her. Serena stared at him. Did he really think that? The two men reappeared holding a struggling Annabelle between them, who was twisting furiously and yelling as loud as she could. Serena's heart skipped a beat as she saw her, seeing that she was at least unharmed, drawing in a deep breath as she felt the cold steel of a knife at her throat. Xavier swore, shifting instantly, growling but unable to do anything while Richard held Serena against him, the knife digging into her slightly as she cried out. You see, Serena, Richard murmured, Annabelle here has been a little uncooperative here. I would prefer not to torture a child but you. You I have no problem torturing if she refuses to do what I want. The men stopped, holding Annabelle back as she screamed, eyes welling with tears as she saw Serena and the bad man holding her. Mummy, she screamed arms and legs flailing as she tried to get to Serena, who was sobbing quietly now, tears running down her face, while Xavier snarled, ready to tear them all limb from limb. So touching, Richard said gloating. Do you think you can do what I asked now, Annabelle? The little girl fell silent, tears dripping slowly down onto the grass as she stopped struggling. Her whole body slumped as she nodded and the Alpha gave her a sickening grin, triumphant at his plan working out perfectly. Serena would be his hostage, his way of getting Annabelle to do whatever he wanted, changing scores of rogues back to werewolves, who would then pledge their allegiance to him and his pack. He would have the largest and most powerful pack in the world, and it was all thanks to this little girl's power. A rogue was dragged out, snarling as two men pulled at the leash extending from a collar that surrounded its neck like it was a normal dog. It was thin, its ribs showing, weakly trying to pull itself away, its ears drooping down and his claws looked as if they had been cut. It was a pitiful thing to see. Serena's heart breaking at how starved it looked and how defeated it seemed. What had they done to this rogue to have it act and look this way? Rogue or not, it didn't deserve this. Annabelle was let go and she moved forward slowly, eyes on the rogue, who looked at her, its eyes never leaving her face as she got closer. The men gripped the rogue by the collar holding it still as she tentatively reached out her small little hand and touched it softly on its nose as it whined in fear. A large flash of white light blinded them, and when they looked a thin, starved, dirty, young man lay there unconscious and completely naked. Take him back to the dungeon and feed his sorry ass, Richard snapped. He looked at Annabelle, who was standing there, uncertain now what to do. Good girl Annabelle, he cooed as she frowned at him. Now mummy, and I are going to go for a walk, while you go back to your room all right. Serena flinched. This was how he was going to control Annabelle for his own means. She'd given him the ammunition he needed. Annabelle's lip already quivering as he gave the signal for the men to take her again. This time let her walk for heaven's sake, Richard told them in exasperation. If you can't catch up to a little girl when she runs away, then maybe you're not as good a guard as you are meant to be in this pack. The men nodded, motioning for Annabelle to move, Xavier watching intently, his nose in the air now, as a familiar smell drifted towards him. Xantha was there, and the other wolves who had promised to help. He could have jumped for joy. Evidently Richard smelled it as well, his hand gripping Serena, even more tightly as she yelped, his guards beginning to shift and prepare, growls filling the air as out of the woods, came a fearsome group of wolves. 
The ground disrupted into chaos as Wolf fought Wolf, complete anarchy as Xavier stalked towards Richard, who began to back away, Serena in front as his hostage, Annabelle already in the house with the guards keeping watch over her. Stay away, he warned Xavier, pushing the knife deeper into Serena's throat, a line of blood appearing as Xavier stopped and growled. A wolf pounced on him, and he was forced to fight back, losing sight of them, and by the time he defeated the wolf Richard and Serena were both gone, hunted. Serena felt herself being pulled backwards as she watched Xavier fighting for his life, Richard desperately forcing her back until they reached the forest. He told her to move, finally letting go eyes promising he wouldn't hesitate to kill her if she tried to run, her feet moving as he pointed and directed her, his eyes never once straying from her. It's over, Serena tried. You gain nothing by keeping me. Xavier and the other wolves will beat your and come looking for me, she said in a tired voice. He growled deep in his throat as she looked back fearful. As long as I have you, then I have leverage, he snapped, and I'm willing to bet that you have the same power as Annabelle, she is your daughter after all. He didn't know, thought Serena in relief. Flynn hadn't divulged that information, perhaps not knowing the full story himself. Serena would never know all she could do was be thankful. Richard snapped at her to turn left, and she did wincing as branches scraped her arms and legs. She could clearly see a small helicopter up ahead, and she halted incredulous at the sight. He'd known all along he'd lose, she thought, and he'd planned for it. You would leave your pack behind and ensure your own survival, she said condemning him with a look that scorched him on the inside. I'll make a new pack, Alpha Richards said blithely, a stronger one hidden from everyone until it's too late to stop me, he added nudging her roughly, when she didn't move immediately. There was no one else present as they got closer and Serena felt herself panicking. It wasn't being in the helicopter itself, though that was alarming, but the knowledge that once she was in the sky, there was no way of saving her without harming her in the process. If they flew far enough away, they might never be found. Xavier would be lost to her forever. She slipped, sliding on some rocks beneath her shoes, Richard's arm shooting out and steadying her as she looked at him in surprise. Had he meant to do that or was it a reflex? Clumsy woman, he muttered. Can't have you injuring yourself and not able to use your powers. She deflated. So much for having the tiniest bit of humanity, she thought with a sigh. This man was crazy delusional and downright cruel to abandon his pack with no regard for those he left behind without a qualm. They were several feet away from the helicopter when Serena stopped and turned defiantly. She wasn't getting in that helicopter. She didn't care what he did. Annabelle was waiting for her, Xavier was waiting for her, Xantha was waiting for her and countless others. She would not be separated from them no matter the cost. She would not allow this man to use her for her powers, let him become more greedy and power-hungry than he already was. Move, Richard growled, and she shook her head, refusing to be intimidated even as his eyes began to flash. Do you want to die, he sneered, because if you don't move that's what will happen? You won't kill me, Serena snapped, you need me remember. Maybe not kill, but I can hurt you to the brink of death. Even you would take time to heal from that. She felt her body trembling, even as she held her ground. Her eyes swept the forest in desperation, hoping to see anyone, anyone at all racing towards her. There was no one, everyone still clearly fighting back at the house and her spirits sank. She was alone for now. There's no one coming to save you, 
Richard said chuckling, as he looked over to what she was trying to see. Now are we going to do this the easy way, and you get in the helicopter, like an obedient little girl, or are we going to this the hard way, where I'm forced to hurt you, and shove you into the helicopter? His voice was cold, eyes flashing black now, as she heard the finality in his voice. Richard had clearly had enough, his body moving closer with each word as he towered over her. She gulped and twirled around, intending to run when she heard a loud menacing growl, before a black wolf, with white tinges in its fur bounded in front of her. Its teeth pulled back into a snarl as she backed away. She tripped and fell, luckily on her bottom, feet scrabbling as she pushed herself away sobbing, the wolf steadily walking towards her, his paws thumping loudly on the ground, eyes glinting in amusement at her predicament. This was it thought Serena hysterically as her fingers scrabbled backwards, seeking anything that might help fingers tightening around a rock about the size of her hand as she flung it directly at him, the wolf letting out a small yelp as it hit its nose directly. She didn't have time to do anything else as it lowered its head back down and snapped its jaws, body tensing to leap. She was done for. She closed her eyes preparing for the inevitable, confused when nothing happened. Instead a loud ferocious growl, making her snap her eyes open. She recognized Xavier's wolf instantly, letting out a large whoosh as she hurriedly got out of the way. She watched them snapping and biting each other, dancing around and tackling when there was an opening. So similar were the wolves that at times it was difficult to make out which one was which was causing her great anxiety. They were growing tired Serena could see, no longer attacking with such speed and warily observing each other. Then another wolf came out of the forest and stepping into the clearing. It joined Xavier's side and stared down Richard's wolf. Then another and another until a huge group stood directly behind Xavier their eyes, challenging the other, who was backing away slowly. In the distance Serena could see Xantha holding Annabelle, her eyes lighting up in relief, though she dared not move from her position. Xavier shifted back to human form, eyes quickly raking over Serena, and looked relieved to find her unharmed, his eyes shifting back to Richard, who was preparing to flee. It's over Alpha Richard, Xavier told him his voice booming and heard by everyone behind him, and even the few still at the pack house. Xavier took a deep breath, gathering up all of his Alpha authority and using it in one simple command that Alpha Richard was unable to resist. Shift, Xavier commanded, his voice washing over everyone, the Alpha command strong as it compelled the other wolf, who bowed its head in defeat. The sound of bones cracking and reforming filling the air, power she didn't know she had. He shifted, sprawled on the ground, head hung down in defeat, completely naked but oblivious as Xavier stared him down with cold, narrowed eyes, debating what to do with Richard. It's over, Richard, he said softly sensing the other man's lack of resistance and seeing the man's face crumple, the other wolves restless and chatting amongst themselves, those who had shifted back at any rate, the others mind-linking. The helicopter sat forgotten although Serena could swear some of the wolves were eyeing it greedily. Do it, he was softly spoken. Barely above a whisper yet Serena, and Xavier heard it clearly, kill me already, Richard said slightly louder, his expression earnest, almost begging for his life to be over. Gone was the proud, cruel man that Serena had first seen, a sad, despairing man now in its place. Xavier was considering, Serena could see him decide to put Richard out of his misery.
his eyes turning black and his claws beginning to extend from his nails. Serena closed her eyes. She couldn't bear it. Didn't want to see any more bloodshed. Enough had been spilled already. What good would come off killing this man now? His pack might flourish, their strength returning but for Serena the cost was still too high. Something was niggling in her mind, Blaze also trying to remember something, something important that she was only just trying to remember right now. Has it ever occurred to you that you might be able to heal more than just wounds or injuries Serena? The words came floating back into her mind, unbidden and still a puzzle to her. She repeated them softly, a sense of urgency arising as Xavier made a move, her shout stopped, halting him in his tracks, as he whipped his head around to look at her. Has it ever occurred to you that you might be able to heal more than just wounds or injuries Serena? Her eyes flashed as she finally understood what the moon goddess had been trying to say, the words cryptic and yet somehow Serena had worked it out. Would it work, she thought as she moved towards Richard, Xavier reaching out a hand to her in concern as she shrugged it off, putting herself between the two men, a look of pity on her face as she held out a hand to Richard, who looked puzzled. She concentrated, directing all of her magic and healing power into her hands, letting it trickle through her body to those two points. Even as she spoke, stand up, she said softly, Richard hesitating, still sprawled on the hard dirt floor. Stand up, Serena said with a little more authority. Richard scrambled to his feet. Xavier shooting him a warning look that plainly indicated he'd kill Richard if he so much as made a move towards her. Serena's hands began to glow, twirling white light around both hands as she cocked her head and eyed him considering. This was something she'd never attempted before, and she wasn't quite sure how to go about it. Could she heal his heart and his mind? Make the darkness and hatred he felt fade away. Was it possible or was she clinging to a false hope, failed to understand Celine's cryptic words properly? She shook away all of the negative thoughts and focused, one hand gently placed on the man's chest, the other one placing itself atop his head as she closed her eyes and she began to concentrate, Xavier puzzled by her actions, but making no move to stop her. With a deep breath, Serena directed her magic into him, and suddenly, it was like time stood still. Like everyone was frozen in time, their bodies still, as she looked at everyone. Leaves were stuck mid-air in the process of falling to the ground, Richard's body unmoving as well, Serena the only one who seemed to be able to do anything at all. It was frightening even as she forced the fear away. It would do her no good to panic now. Not sure what would happen if she took her hands away from Richard at this crucial moment. She closed her eyes and inhaled, and suddenly it felt like she had been drawn into his mind, blackness swirling around his mind as images flashed through them at lightning speed. Fascinated, she saw the darkness almost pulse with certain ones almost like it became stronger, and it came to her that these must be his memories. Things he remembered. Was it perhaps the bad ones that made the darkness pulse like that? She attempted to watch the images slowly, almost like sifting through a photo album, she thought absently, as she found them slowing at her request. Serena didn't question it. Everything she was doing now was almost like she knew what to do. Something in her subconscious rising to the fore and directing her to do what she needed. There and there, so many of them and the repeated over and over again, a constant stream or loop of images and memories. Serena could even hear the same phrases that repeated themselves, like a constant mantra, wincing at the sheer resentment dripping from it. Love is weakness. Love just leads to pain. 
Power is all that matters. Never let anyone best you, ever. These were the most prominent ones and Serena felt overwhelming sadness and pain for Richard. How long had these been spoken in his mind over and over? How terrible to not want love, to not want the one thing everybody desired and needed in life. Not just love from a partner or mate, but the unconditional love from parents and children, the love from friends and relatives, siblings and more. To deny that was to close and lock down a part of your heart, to give in to darkness and never let it out again. No wonder Richard was so bitter and so twisted. But how could she help him and give him light and love once again? Memories. Serena instinctively thrust out a hand, and the memories slowed almost like in slow motion, and she felt herself slip into them, almost as though she was standing there herself, as they actually happened. The first memory she saw was the image of what she assumed was his father shouting at his mother furniture and plates thrown across the room as a little boy that could only be Richard Coward, hiding behind the couch, hands pressed against his ears to stop the loud noises that were scaring him. She saw it disappear and another memory form in front of her. This time it was of Richard being struck over and over with a belt against his back by his father his little cries causing her heart to clench as she screamed out for him to stop, to leave the boy alone. Richard couldn't have been any older than seven at that stage. If he was being punished so brutally back, then how much more had he suffered in the next few years? Another one took place. A girl presumably 18, as that was the age wolves, found their mates. At least what Serena thought she'd heard, standing before a gangly teenage boy, his body quite lanky and his eyes shimmering with unshed tears. She heard the girl speak the words of rejection, the crack in Richard's voice, as he accepted it, a large group of other teenagers surrounding the girl, and laughing at his expense as he ran away. Then the most shocking and horrifying memory of all. The image of his father killing his mother right in front of him, after a loud and intense argument, flinging her body to the floor as though it was of no consequence, no remorse shown whatsoever at his actions as Richard had stared at his father in disbelief. Then she felt the overwhelming anger and hatred that had consumed him, tackling his father to the floor as he shifted. The fight that followed long and bloody, before Richard's wolf ended his father's life. His wolf standing triumphantly over his father's dead body, turning away and heading out to claim the title now rightfully his. Serena sucked in a breath. Her heart was breaking at every memory she saw, the emotions he felt also running through her. He'd been so sweet, so kind as a little boy but with everything that he had faced, had endured in the short amount of time, he'd lived was it any wonder he had become what he had. No one had stepped in, no one had stood up for the little boy, too afraid of his father to question him, let alone rescue a little boy who badly needed it. She wanted to fix it all, take all of his hurt, his pain, his hatred, resentment and bitterness and fling it away never to take hold of him again. But memories can't just disappear. No, she wasn't going to be able to do that. But maybe his happier memories and being reminded of them could heal him a little, lessen the effects the bad ones had. She flung up her hand and brought his happier memories in front of her, almost weeping at how few there were compared to the bad ones. He'd never had a chance, thought Serena tearfully, not when there were hardly any good memories that had firmly fixed themselves into his mind. Where did she start, though? Did she start at the beginning when he was but a baby, or did she make herself go backwards, from the latest memory down to being a child? She contemplated. There was no rush, no need to hurry. Time had no meaning where she was. 
standing still for her as she did what was required. Even her magic seemed to be strong, replenishing itself automatically, her energy not fading one bit in the slightest. Serena took a deep breath and flung her arm out. She'd made her decision, her magic transporting her to the first memory. It was Richard as a baby being held by his mother for the first time, her eyes shining with love as she gripped his tiny fingers and hand, his father standing behind her with a wide grin on his face as he gazed down at his son. They hadn't always been horrible then, at least not in the beginning. She felt his tiny emotions and she allowed her magic to strengthen them, flowing love into him and firmly attaching it to the memory that somehow seemed more significant to him now. She put herself into the next one. This memory was faded blurry, as though it was on the verge of disappearing from his mind completely. She watched as Richard raced around with a few other small children, playing happily at school, his shrieks and giggles filling the air as Serena smiled. Her magic flowed and the image became stronger, more focused, no longer blurry or grainy, vibrant colors replacing the faded ones. His excitement, his happiness was strengthened. Serena attaching the emotions firmly before releasing that memory back into his mind. The next one was an important one, at least one of the most important things a shifter would go through. Serena watched Richard go through his shift for the first time, the most beautiful wolf standing underneath a full moon, his screams of pain long forgotten as he raced through the forest and bonded with his wolf for the first time, she strengthened the feeling of love he'd had for his wolf, his sense of friendship through their bonding, watching the memory become more vivid as she slowly released it again. The more she strengthened and released the good memories the more Serena could see of the darkness beginning to fade, no longer as dark or large as it had been initially. She turned to the next one. This time she saw Richard sparring against another warrior in human form, fighting with all his strength, his muscles and body now fit and toned from his continuous training. She saw him defeat his sparring partner, helping them up and shaking their hand. She felt his pride, his respect and the strength he'd felt flowing through him, and she intensified and attached them to it letting it go back slowly into his mind as more darkness faded away. One more and it would be gone completely mused Serena, then his heart would need healing. She turned back and flung her arm once more, vanishing into his strongest good memory. It was his first kiss, stolen under a large shaded tree with a beautiful girl who had feelings for him. She felt the love towards her his shyness as he put his lips against hers shyly, heart beating wildly as she pushed back into him, responding eagerly before it completely stopped and stilled. Serena frowned. What had happened to the girl? It wasn't the one who'd rejected him. Had she perhaps found her mate and moved away? Guessing that was the case, Serena smiled and strengthened the feelings of love kindness, affection and friendship, releasing it slowly back into his mind as the blackness left, completely gone and no longer manipulating Richard's mind, the phrases no longer repeating themselves. Now for the hard thought Serena closing her eyes and concentrating. Once broken now restored. Serena delved deep, seeing Richard's heart, tendrils of darkness weaving itself around it. How does one heal a broken heart? She didn't know, but she trickled her magic into it, envisioning and flowing the feeling of love, happiness, joy. Any positive emotion she could think of she poured into it, drawing on her own experiences and feelings, the tendrils slowly fading to dull gray before unwinding itself and fading away. Serena was tired, 
her energy now beginning to fall, as she felt herself drifting out of Richard and almost slamming back into her body. What she had been had been merely her consciousness and a shell delving into Richard. She blinked, time beginning to move again as Richard fell, legs completely buckling underneath him, Serena swaying dangerously on her feet, Xavier's strong arms gripping her from behind and firmly keeping her upright. The man who looked up was a completely different man, almost glowing from the inside, a smile on his face, even though he was quite perplexed. How did you do it? he asked Serena, confusing Xavier and everyone else who heard him, muttering about his different appearance and genuinely having no clue to what had just occurred. Richard felt like he had been reborn, like he was full of hope and dreams once again, the resentment and hatred seemingly gone. He knew without a doubt it was Serena's doing, remembered her touching his head and chest with her glowing hands. Had she pushed everything negative out of him somehow? Serena took a deep breath. I strengthened your happy memories and attached emotions to them. I wanted you to feel those feelings you once had. Remember the happier times rather than the sad and bad ones. She knew she couldn't really explain it, but she didn't have to as Richard scrambled to his feet, and everyone saw his face clearly. His eyes were fairly dancing, his smile lighting up his entire face, his hair a lighter brown. There was not an ounce of anger in him at all. It felt like a huge weight had fallen off his shoulders, thought Richard. Thank you, he told her honestly, meaning every word of it. She'd done him a huge favor, saved him from the hatred consuming him completely. Even his wolf was more communicative. Having retreated to the far corner of Richard's mind, the more cruel he became. They both owed her a debt of gratitude. Suddenly his face fell. I've done so many bad things, he muttered shamefully. How do I make up for that? My pack has suffered under my rule. I'm no longer fit to be alpha. Xavier was eyeing him thoughtfully, the other wolves beginning to disperse sensing the fight was well and truly over, leaving the fate of Richard in his hands as they went back to the pack house and grounds, helping the wounded, Xantha doing the same and assuring Annabelle that she would see Serena shortly as the girl began to help as well. She was so attached to Serena that Xantha was frightened. She would put up a fight or scream, but instead she accepted Xantha's assurances without resistance. Having seen her mother she was sure she was safe now and wanted to help the poor wounded wolves and people. You can make it up to your pack by showing them how remorseful you are. Release the prisoners in the dungeon. Rebuild the houses crumbling around you. Ensure they have enough to eat and build treaties with other alphas. Strive to be the best alpha you can be and be a kind one who listens to his pack. That's how you can start making it up. Richard nodded, listening to the wise words and shaking the other Alpha's hand, surprising Serena with a huge hug. Thank you both, he murmured. I'm going to go back to the house and help with the wounded as a start. He rushed off leaving Xavier and Serena to themselves. Xavier gently hugging her from behind before turning her around to face her. Never frighten me like that again, he murmured, sweeping a loose lock of hair behind her ear. I thought he was going to hurt you before I could get there. At least mind link me next time, he complained and she apologized profusely, realizing that he was right with what he said. I won't, she promised holding her breath as he bent his head and looked at her, his lips pressing against her tenderly as she leaned into him, her hands wrapping around his waist. She inhaled his scent and closed her eyes. This felt so right to her, so perfect in every way. In that moment she forgave everything.
wanting a clean slate with Xavier and to focus on their future rather than dwell on a past. Richard had shown her the danger of holding a grudge or resentment over a long period of time, so she'd learned a valuable lesson as well. We should go back, help the wounded, Xavier muttered with one last short kiss before they broke apart. Serena scolded herself for forgetting there were others who needed their help, about to rush off, when her legs began to tremble, and she felt herself falling slowly, Xavier scooping her up into his arms. She was drained, tired as he shook his head at her. You did too much, he scolded. Walking back with her in his arms, you will sit and rest. You are in no condition to heal anyone, he added firmly, Serena nodding. She really wasn't in any condition to heal, she thought slightly guiltily. The second he came in view of the pack house, Serena heard Annabel's shriek of joy, Mummy, as she ran over and attempted to hug Serena awkwardly, while Xavier hastily ordered someone to grab a chair, before placing Serena down on it, Annabel plonking herself down on the grass and leaning against her leg with a blissful smile on her face. She saw Xantha look over at her, waving as she continued to treat the man next to her. She was relieved to see very few casualties, mourning the lives lost regardless, guilt sweeping over her. Alpha Richard's pack had surrendered once they'd noticed him gone, recognizing there was no way they'd win the battle. It had saved many lives, but not before a large number had been wounded on both sides. The ones that had helped Xavier took their members back home. Once all were healed and fully capable of making the trek back, wishing him luck as he thanked them. Alpha Richards was doing what he could to help, cleaning minor cuts and bandaging up wounds. Xantha was getting tired, her healing power hard to direct, and so once all the major or serious injuries were taken care of she was forced to stop. Minor wounds being dealt with by others as she came over to Serena and rested as well. Even the prisoners were taken care of, shocked at their release and the change in Alpha Richard, who was in the thick of it all, even getting food to everyone. His pack was still wary of him though, Xavier promising some of his own pack to remain and help him rebuild his pack and clear the wreckage and debris assuring Richard that he only had to say the word, and he'd send whatever help he required. The other Alpha was so thankful, already determining that Xavier and him would have a strong friendship, if he took the time and effort to get to know him, and reach out when he needed to. It was heartwarming and caused some of his pack to look at him differently, rather than being frightened, they were now intrigued at the change in him giving him a chance to prove himself over the next few weeks and hoping the change would last. A portal opened and a cheerful Stefan stepped out, looking at all the littered branches and debris with a raised eyebrow, taking in the organization as pack members helped each other. Looks like I missed everything, he remarked sounding a little upset before brightening back up. Are you ready to come home? Your father is awake, he added to Serena sounding very relieved. She brightened, Annabel gripping her hand, as they all went over to Stefan, Xavier mind-linking, those who were coming back, all of them stepping through the portal Stefan created, grateful to once again be back at the castle, and keen to see the king, who'd woken up from his slumber. The proposal. Serena smiled. Xavier coming up behind her and kissing the back of her neck as she shivered in delight. God, he smelled so good, she thought. Blaze also agreeing and commenting a few things that made her blush and scold her wolf, who was unrepentant. I love you, he whispered, the stubble on his chin rough and ticklish as she giggled slightly and turned to hug him. I love you too. 
she whispered her arms lightly trailing along his as he growled lowly in his throat. You keep touching me like that or keep looking at me, with that teasing look on your face, and I won't be responsible for my actions, he said and she stopped teasing him, smiling at him instead as he relaxed. God, she was hard to resist, his hands constantly wanting to touch her, his wolf constantly pushing to mate her and mark her once again, the smell of their pup bringing their protectiveness and fierce desire to keep them safe to the very forefront of their minds. Where's Annabelle? Serena asked with a raised eyebrow. It had been a few weeks since everything had happened and true to his word Xavier had started trying to involve himself in the little girl's life, even taking her on outings alone. Annabelle had been cautious at first, still remembering when he'd ignored her, wanted nothing to do with her, but as he consistently persevered with her she began to throw towards him, until she now ran towards him, and had begun calling Xavier, Daddy, to his delight, Shadow also excited and embracing the girl as his pup. Serena could swear she saw Xavier wipe tears from his eyes, the first time Annabelle said it, something he fervently denied. Close your eyes, Xavier whispered, and she just stared at him. Why? she said warily as he grunted at her in frustration. Please, just close your eyes, he begged. I promise you won't fall or hurt yourself. She sighed but closed her eyes as instructed her every sense alert as he gently grabbed her hand and led her from the room. Without warning, he swept her up and she shrieked in surprise, her body tensing as she lay in his arms. Steps, Xavier muttered, sorry, and she felt their descent, struggling not to open her eyes, exhaling a deep breath in relief when he placed her back on solid ground. She was curious about what he was doing, sensing his excitement and nervousness as his hand shook slightly. They were in the throne room, thought Serena judging by the path they'd taken, familiar with the layout of the castle and all its entrances and exits, Annabelle dragging her along in the beginning to explore everything they possibly could. Keep them closed, Xavier told her gruffly and she did swearing she heard Annabelle giggling in the distance and the sound of someone else clearing their throat. What on earth was he doing? Serena was getting impatient now, foot tapping on the floor, as she waited for what seemed like an internally long time. All right, Xavier said hesitantly, you can open your eyes now. Slowly she opened them, gasping in astonishment as she took in everything. All of their dear friends and family were present, beaming excitedly at her, white smiles on their faces, her father watching everything from his seat on the throne. But it was what was right in front of her that was making her heart swell with happiness. Annabelle stood there with a sign that read Mary my daddy mummy clutched in her little hands wearing the most adorable pink princess dress with white shoes, her hair even put into pigtails that made her laugh. Her expression was so serious as she stood there and watched Serena, apparently waiting to hear her answer. Serena, Xavier said kneeling in front of her, one knee bent as he took both of her hands in his. You came into my life when I least expected it. So beautiful, so kind, and with a heart of gold. He paused as one of her hands went to her mouth. I didn't know just how much you would change my life. For the better, you showed me how to love, how to care for others, how even in the darkest of times it's less frightening with your mate by your side. Everyone here loves you, Serena. We couldn't imagine life without you in it. Everyone who meets you is changed forever. That's how big of an impact you have in our lives. Serena was sobbing quietly now, extremely touched at the words and everyone's nods as they agreed with Xavier. 
She felt like she was under a spotlight as Xavier tried to reassure her, getting up and firmly grasping both hands again. So I only have one question for you, and I hope you put this stubborn, sometimes stupid man out of his misery, Xavier teased as she chuckled. Will you do me the honor of becoming my wife and being by my side for the rest of our lives? She gasped and then looked over at Annabelle. Yes, she whispered as her little girl shrieked and dropped the sign, everyone laughing at her exuberance. Xavier, however, had one more thing to do and he knelt in front of a startled Annabelle. Annabelle, he said quietly, would you do me the honor of being my daughter? The little girl's face lit up and she flung herself into his arms as he held her tight and kissed her foreheads. Aren't you forgetting something? An amused voice said as someone peeled themselves away from their hiding spot. It was Alpha Richard coming to stand beside Xavier and holding out a small box, taking the lid off with a flourish as Xavier grinned. Serena sucked in a breath. There were two rings, one large, one small, but both had the same design. A small stone in the shape of a heart on top of a white gold band. It was simplistic and perfect, she thought with shining eyes. He placed the smaller one on Annabelle, who eyed it enthusiastically before running over to show Grandpa and everyone else. Moonstone, Xavier said quietly, as he slid the ring onto Serena's trembling hand, because you remind me of the moon goddess, and because I know you've never really liked diamonds. He remembered, thought Serena. She'd mentioned it once and he'd heard it and filed it away in his mind. It was a perfect fit, fitting on her finger, as though it was made for her. Xavier leaned forward and kissed her. Serena melting into his embrace as the crowd cheered, breaking away and smiling as everyone began to approach wanting to offer their congratulations. I love you, he whispered, one hand going to her stomach where their unborn child was growing. I love you, Serena whispered in tears. This was the perfect way to start a new chapter in their lives. He'd proven himself beyond a doubt. Serena knowing that she broached the subject of marking each other tonight, something she knew he'd been desperately hoping for while respecting her decision to wait, wanting time to develop their relationship first this time. She smiled. It looked like she had a wedding to plan, but would they marry before or after their child was born? Epilogue Part 1 The Sound of a Baby's Constant Cries woke her up as she sat up sleepily, eyes still half closed as she stumbled towards the nursery, connected to their room. Her bare feet padded along the carpet, white nightgown floating lightly around her as she made the way to the doorway. She smiled at the touching scene in front of her. Xavier sat in the feeding chair gently rocking back and forth as he gave their little baby daughter Rosalie a bottle, gently shushing her in an effort to keep her from waking Serena, who badly needed their sleep. Hush, little one, he soothed as Serena glanced out the nearby window, seeing that it was morning, although clearly quite early. She heard a giggle and peered round, seeing Annabelle sitting on the floor of the nursery and clutching her own baby doll as she mimicked Xavier's movements. Gently he positioned Rosalie on his shoulder and burped her, laughing heartily as Rosalie let out a large belch, stopping abruptly when she vomited all over his shoulder and grimacing. Rosalie, he complained, why do you only do this to me? Not once have I seen you be sick on mummy, he whined as Serena started to giggle silently behind him. It was true, every time their daughter was sick it was on Xavier, Serena had yet to cop it. It's okay daddy still loves you, he cooed, holding her as she stared up at him with her big brown eyes, one little hand grasping his finger, 
as he stared down at her entranced. Annabelle crawled up to him, and he sat her on his lap, holding Rosalie, so that Annabelle could see her too, watching as she gave her little sister a big kiss on her cheek. Serena's heart melted as she walked closer and tapped Xavier on the shoulder. He'd been so focused on the girls, he failed to notice her approaching, or even smelling her scent. Good morning, Serena told him moving into his view, as he frowned in disappointment. I was hoping to let you sleep in, he sighed. I got up as soon as I heard her crying, he said with a huff. Serena laughed, I appreciate the sentiment, she told him lovingly, but I'm awake now. Maybe I can take a nap later, she suggested when he still looked crestfallen. He lit up at that shore. I can easily deal with Rosalie and Annabelle, he murmured while Serena merely raised an eyebrow at him. And you won't get a maid to change her diaper again, she threaded as he nodded quite sheepishly. Serena had caught him out the other day, handing over Rosalie to a maid and asking her to change the diaper because he didn't know how. He did but was quite happy to let the maid believe him and do it for him. Serena had not been impressed. Morning, mummy, Annabelle said happily. Good morning, darling, Serena told her warmly embracing her in a hug and giving her pouting husband a kiss on his cheek. The smell of baby formula was drifting towards her, and she wrinkled her nose in disgust, calmly taking Rosalie from Xavier and suggesting he have a quick shower. He almost ran to the bathroom as she laughed, clearly disliking the smell on him as well. The knock on the bedroom door caused her to walk over and open it, her expectant father, standing on the other side beaming widely at her. Grandpa, Annabelle screamed, throwing herself into his arms, as he hugged her and put her down. You would think he'd been missing for days, instead of her not seeing him for the hours. She slept thought Serena chuckling silently. She saw his eyes drift to Rosalie and sighed, handing her over as he rocked her in his arms. Good morning, little one. He cooed and Serena fought the urge to roll her eyes. What was it about babies that made men fawn all over them? Her father was one of the worst, desperate to see the girls every day. She was shocked to find him, even happily changing Rosalie's diapers or feed her a bottle, looking as though he'd done this all his life. He was very good with children. Can I take them both for a walk? Julian asked eagerly, and she fought the urge to laugh as he held her four-month daughter protectively, even though she'd never refused him before. Thank goodness Ryan had agreed to be Alpha of Xavier's pack and Xantha to be Luna. Serena didn't think her father would cope if they'd moved out of the castle, and to be honest, it was nice to be near him and see him adoring his grandchildren. She just wished he'd find a mate of his own. He'd be a great mate and husband to some lucky girl or guy someday. Maybe the moon goddess would bless him with one soon. You can take them for a walk, Serena agreed. But you have to use the pram for Rosalie, she told him firmly. You cannot keep her in your arms every minute that you have her. She'll get used to it and expect it, she complained. I don't care. I don't mind holding her. Julian began to protest, stopping at the look on Serena's face and nodding hastily, grabbing Annabel's hand and almost dragging the girl out of the room. Serena opened her mouth to tell him that neither girl had been changed out of their nightclothes, yet then shrugged. Who cared? She could change their clothes later. Her father had come at the right time, thought Serena with a smile, joining a very happy Xavier in the shower, soaking in the warm water and his gentle caresses as they washed each other, Serena firmly stopping it there. 
She had something to tell Xavier and didn't want to be distracted from it. They toweled off, Serena looking away as she dressed, all too aware that if she stared at him any longer she'd be the one dragging him to the bed. She was grateful they had wasted no time getting married, Xavier and Serena marking each other, the very night of the day he'd proposed. Now, they were closer more than ever and the family unit she'd always dreamed of having. Now, Xavier said calmly now fully dressed and sitting casually on the bed, what is it you're wanting to talk about? Who said I had something to tell you? Serena protested as his eyes narrowed and he studied her. Because I know you and there's something that's on your mind, he said evenly as she sat next to him on the bed and leaned into his shoulder. All right, Serena said a little timidly. This was either going to shock him or make him deliriously happy or both. She took a deep breath. Xavier, I'm pregnant, she blurted out as he stiffened. She waited holding her breath before he began to laugh loudly, his whole body shaking.